Today we have uh, two great friends of mine, Gene and Dylan. That's not their first time in Monterrey. That they came here three years ago, and uh, since then we've been hanging out at least once a year in, in Milan or New York or whatever. And uh, it's I'm very excited to have them here in Monterrey. I'm very excited to have them here in the studio, and I'm sure this is going to be a, an enlightening lecture. Remember that studio night specifically is an opportunity for our friends and colleagues to talk about a passion project, not necessarily this is what we do, but more, more of this is what we're passionate about or this is a passion project that is really moving us and hopefully that moves you as well. Mm -hmm. Okay? Take it away guys. Cool. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. So. Um, my name is Dylan, this is Jean. Um, we have a studio called Ladies and Gentlemen. We're based in Brooklyn, New York, and um, our studio practice itself kind of explores um, product design on various levels. So we create a lot of furniture, a lot of lighting. We also um, think about how these objects are integrated into architecture and um, and into experiences. So um, we kind of have a very broad broad view of, um, of design. And that's part of the, the idea of the studio is that we're product designers, but we're very expansive in how we think about our practice. And um, one of the, the things that has really sort of captured our attention is this idea of being explorative and traveling and like using experiences out in the world to gather um, inspiration and resources and create and build community. And um, so one of the projects that is really, is like a really great example of that is uh, a project called Furnishing Utopia, which is a, a group, a group endeavor that we uh, had the privilege of being invited to in 2015. And, um, had such an amazing experience that we became um, really sort of integral in growing the growing the organization and the movement. So, um, and it's a very strong passion project of Jean's, and we were both very involved in it. But um, Jean's, um, yeah. <laughs> Jean's going to take you through uh, furnishing Utopia and what yeah. Um, what it is. Yeah, I could. Yeah, we'll talk about kind of what it is, and also go through. Um, to show you like the type of projects that we've done and the formats and then um and then we'll also do this exercise interactive sort of virtual tour I guess. we're going to take you on a field trip yeah, yeah. <laughs> as yeah. best as we can yeah so furnishing utopia um it has it's a collective um where um we're looking where it started with just a bunch of independent designers really excited to learn about the history of American Shakers and thinking about American Shakers, I don't know if you know that much about it, but it's a religious movement that was inspired by the Quakers and then moved, they went from the UK, fled to the US and started this community and it's all about um, peace and harmony and very um, self-sustaining utopian community and they make a lot of beautiful products and also like architecture and they had an old garden and farm and this was like back in 1700s um, when there was not an example of that and the woman the person that started was a female and their sort of whole ideal is about equality between gender and race and they accepted anybody that was willing to sort of you know follow the kind of the rules of shakerism and um, to create this like idea of heaven on earth. And so as like designers, we were more, at first it was started off just like a curiosity of um, looking at their designs. And so like Furnish Utopia is about, you know, it's a global collective uh, exploring design values about culture and time. And it was a very, just like an independent grassroots initiative that we wanted to kind of get back into that process of being explorative and being like inspired and kind of being curious again. And so we, yeah, so we 
we do a mix of workshops and um, and also um, design where we design and respond to the place that we do research in, um, such as the Shaker first started with that. Um, and, and then we, yeah, create an exhibition responding to kind of the things that we are inspired by. And so Furniture Utopia is a group from, made up of maybe like, yeah, it's like 25 different designer studios and from all over the world, from the US, from Japan, from Belgium or Netherlands and Singapore to Canada. And um, yeah, just sort of like putting that wide, casting like a wide net of like people who are interested in this um, sort of process and um, bringing people physically to a, a context of a workshop and, and then explore and discover and then from there um, create designs that's derived from their own like curiosity. Um, and so our sort of collective approach um, is that, you know, it's about learning from the past and, um, you know, look, doing really in-depth research and um, working with curators and from like museums and um, looking at just different parts of time, perhaps the movement had represented certain um, ideals that we could still learn from. And, and then we engage with the present by creating exhibitions and to also connect with the public or design industry. And then from there, we kind of, the work is about, is about how we could evolve um, into the future about these ideals and perhaps the things that we learned from the past. You know, even it's like a religion that's, a, like Shaker is like a religion that's sort of becoming extinct because there's really only three Shakers left, but a lot of their ideals, it's about like peace, harmony, and balance, and just virtues, like everyday virtues that could lend itself to um, to a better way of like living and also um, thinking and operating. Um, yeah, so these are some of the examples of like the Shaker sort of um, you know, we went to like a workshop, like there's a museum that is there that you could just run around that has like all the original shaker buildings and um, yeah, and these are the participants, which is like Studio Gorm from Oregon and Norm Architect from Denmark and some of you may already met Jonah from, you know, all over. Um, <laughs> and yeah, Shigeki from Japan or Helgear from Norway, like there's just like a, a collective of different people from different parts of the world. And, um, and the whole kind of collective vision is that um, the group is more about the reason why we come together and doing these workshops and doing these exhibits. It's about not designing from a commercial perspective, but it's from like a curiosity and conceptual perspective of exploring ideas and values and but we start with like academic sort of um, sort of approach like our approach is a very holistic um, kind of connecting all these different institutions like education versus cultural institutions with museums and and then connecting with industry so we'll work with Herman Miller or design within reach to create exhibi exhibitions and then the exhibitions then connect and informs the public about these sort of utopian, like exploring utopian ideals. Um, yeah, so these are, you know, like an example of a workshop. Um, we'll, you know, spend about like four or five days, three or four days um, exploring a place, um, the museum itself, and then, you know, get together and have this like conversation about what you find inspiration and then see some of the processes or look at the archive. Um, but realizing, you know, these the Shaker is such like a small little community, but they're just such richness in culture and history. And I think about, we sort of think about not limiting it to Shaker, but even with every culture, there's something with every place that has some deep, rich history that perhaps is under appreciated or under discover that everywhere we could go is to kind of, to be able to dig out like the kind of yeah the deeper sort of um, 
values that are history. Um, and then we here's an examples of like exhibitions. Um, the idea is this whole exhibition was called Hands to Work, and um, the exhibition is kind of inspired by Shaker's like approach of always like working and working with our hands and crafting beautiful objects. And even if it's like a simple broom, they'll design it really beautifully and they're very inventive. So they essentially created like a flat broom, but before then it was like round brooms that are, you know, like imagining like a witch <laughs> flying it's like that form, that archetype. Um, but they decided to redesign it so the broom is flat. And then so it actually creates more of like a directional um, way of like sweeping. And um, so then we ask a lot of the designer to kind of think about the ritual of um, clean, or you know, the everyday rituals perhaps that it seems mundane or it seems laborious and how can an object connects you back to reappreciate these rituals or maybe it's a ritual I really love like just love washing dishes and how can the object you know make you really further appreciate that um, act of working um, yeah so and we had uh, yeah it's like a collection of probably I think like every year we'll do like a workshop and then and then the following year we'll do like an exhibition with like 22 designers it start yeah right now it's twenty two but it'll be always growing and then um, and then usually the collection will end up being like thirty or forty different pieces um, which is like pretty impressive considering um, how little time it technically is <laughs> and then, yeah but the but, uh, oh, yeah. I mean the exhibits also include other programming too so the objects are on display and then we're also doing panel discussions this was a panel discussion with. Um, a, a shaker, like scholar, and Tom Sachs, the artist. Um, so we really sort of getting people to engage with the topic. We did a series of videos, like being holistic about communicating the ideas to, to the general public is a big part of the exhibitions too. Yeah, so I guess we could take you kind of through this um, um, a little... process of just like starting with like what um, shaker design give you like an idea of shaker design um, and what the workshop context is like and then um, then we'll do um, there's so many insane there's just like so much stuff and it's so rich and so I think we want to format um, after kind of showing the general sort of like what Shaker Village is like, then we'll do this like Russian roulette style where we, you know, I guess how you describe it. Like. Well, so much of the experience there is just being there and looking around and like looking in a corner and being like, that's an amazing doorstop. Mm -hmm. And um, we're usually joined by the curators of the museum or some expert in, that's embedded in that space. And, um, and then we'll ask them about, you know, what's the story behind this piece? And there usually is a story. And so, so much of the experience is about that. So we're just gonna, and people take hundreds, we have hundreds of photos in our database now. So we'll just like scan through the photo or we'll just stop on a random photo and we can talk about that object yeah. and just do that for a little bit. Yeah. Until our time runs out. Or if you see something, just say stop. Or whoever says stop, it will stop at the photo and be like, okay, let's talk about this. And then, yeah. so yeah, after all, I'll just give you like a general answer. So like, yeah, with um, this is sort of like the mantra of like American Shaker. Their main thing is like actually, yeah, it's all about creating heaven on earth and um, and finding like peace in um, in whatever they do and balance. And but also part of the kind of the down, the sort of the disadvantage of their religion is that it's a celibate religion, so they can't have kids, they can't have sex, and it's like very much, it's almost like a monastery in some ways, right? When yeah. you join the Shaker village, you're you're giving up yourself to the community, so um, so that means not that means like leaving your ego at the door. It means not 
recreating. If you have children, you give your children up to the, your, they become like your brother and sister in the community. And um, you devote yourself to this idea that you're part of this community and that craft and um, like a simple way of communal living is a way to get, achieve heaven on earth. Yeah, but it was quite progressive in considering it started in like late 1700s and by a woman named Anne Lee from the UK and fled to the US to start this movement with like her brothers. And so one of the biggest sort of um, values I thought was really like eye-opening was that the main top sort of things of the ideals is equality of the sexes and equality in labor, equality in poverty, no original poor, industrial freedom, and then freedom of speech and um, justice and kindness and all these like, or true doc democracy and thinking about all these ideals about how to bring a peace through like a poor community. Um, and unfortunately, because of such like a small esoteric religious group, I think a lot of the most society kind of just stopped and I was like, they're weirdos, and but they did make really beautiful stuff. And um, the stuff, ref the objects yeah. reflected these values. Like everything yeah. they did reflected these values. So. Yeah, and they designed a whole like community around this like holistic, self-sustaining. Um, self yeah, village essentially. So they would have a farm, they have a barn, they have like workshops where they make baskets and linen, weave their own linen or chairs and do welding or blacksmith and also grow their own, yeah, made their own beer or cider and also just, yeah, took care of everybody. So everybody took care of each other. Um, but the men and women lived separately and then that was kind of like the rules that, you know, that they like celibacy in the community. Um, separate but equal. Separate but equal. <laughs> yeah. So um, these are sort of just the general aesthetic of it's very minimal. So they're kind of seen as like the first minimalist of um, design, essentially. Like sort this of was in an era where everyone was like referencing old world, like European mm -hmm. aesthetics. So like Victorian, um, Victorian era kind of like excessiveness yeah this is very much not that <laughs> yeah so it's quite revolutionary as a movement and for them to say like this this pairing or sort of distilling and really cutting out any sort of ornamental or frivolous like um decorations that was such like a statement but in itself these ideals created a, a design language that was very um that really really um lasted like a in time and um, in values. So, yeah, so like they're known for um, the signature shaker sort of design. It's like they have these uh, shaker rails and they have hooks on it. And then, so the idea is like you could hang different tools or even a chair. Or, oh, you know. <laughs> these are the shakers. <laughs> Not, they look like they're miserable because <laughs> 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 it took like an hour to develop the photo or whatever, yeah. like expose the photo. So, <laughs> yeah. so they did dress nice. <laughs> um, yeah. So those kids are like somebody's children, but they're supposed to be like brother and sister because they're part of the community. Yeah. Yeah. yeah they they they're raised by the community. Yeah. So. They're all over. They're yeah, yeah. in some ways there's some yeah. beauty. It's like, oh, now all of a sudden you have a bigger family than you. you know, <laughs> like, I don't know. I grew up with like a big family with like aunties and uncles, yes. and so it's like, why well, not have another extra? <laughs> some food and <laughs> so, and this is like a barn. One of the main sort of invention of um, Shaker, where they created a barn that's circular, and the idea is like you could. There's different levels, and so the bottom would be where the cows are, and then the second level, the, it would be like a, where the they could bring in like a horse or a carriage that that carried all the hay, and then they would throw it. It's open in the, in the middle, and then they would like throw it down the center, and then so it's like using gravity to kind of work with the kind of the um, flow of work. It was circular because. 
horses have a really hard time backing up. Yeah. So like if they go into a room, like it's hard to back up a horse. I mean, yeah, like, so I guess so they like, just go like, around. Like, oh, around. Same with yeah. cows. Yeah. So they're very efficient in their, their working, and actually, um, it's kind of um, they're kind of associated with the Amish, who are like very anti-technology in in the states, but they're actually really different because they strongly embrace technology. The, the, Technology available to them at that time. They just lived a really simple life around technology. Like when technology made sense to help them live their lives, they they were like the first to buy a car in their community. So yeah, and they were like architects. They also were like good at marketing. So they designed um, one of the invention that by Shaker is uh, seed packets. Where most before then it was all the you know like vegetable seeds was sold in bulk, kind of, you know, just write it, but they decided to, like, design it so it's individual packets for people to, um, you know, it's easier to purchase and um, all of that. Yeah. So these are kind of the dwellings that they lived in, so it's, like, really beautiful, minimal. Um, it's very symmetrical, so it's meant for, like, one side is for women, one side is for men, or, yeah. So. Very clear forms, like the forms they painted, the functions, and um, even the, the buildings were color-coded, so the white white paint was used to symbolize like spiritual buildings, so this was like a meeting house where they would do their rituals, and the brick dwelling is for dwelling. Um, the red language was um, used to denote like a highly functional like work building, like a barn. Um, this was, this was like a factory style building that was driven by hydropower and had like a laundry facility and then like a machine shop and a tannery and all these functions all in one. Yeah, it was a pink house. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is actually like a combination. I think they, it was quite unexpected, but I think the explanation is that they use, they're also very resourceful, so it's like a combination of using the the brick and then using the leftover white paint and then they created <laughs> this and it's like it's actually like the horse barn which is you know pretty clever <laughs> yeah like maybe like theoretically like kind of the less important yeah. one got the like yeah. combo paint yeah um but so inside one of these like workshop buildings they still have a lot of the tools and um yeah that it's just filled with like really specific tools for a specific task um because they're also about like creating, yeah, they thought about like efficiency and form and um, yeah, and this is a good example of like a shaker chair and the idea of like how little can they, how light can they make the object feel and um, how little material how little, can you use. But it's still structural. They also have these like incredibly beautiful like work benches that are kind of works of art in their own right. Mm -hmm. These are the example, very you know, iconic shaker chairs that it's woven with tape and very light. Very good deal. Yeah, five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> <Get on. laughs> um, but they have it in different sizes for different size people, and sometimes for babies. And yeah, I think the smallest one is like you know, this. And even even for a kid, they still think about like, oh, it's still they're sitting on the best quality object. It's <laughs> ridiculous. Man, back to the <laughs> And they are known for shaker boxes, and they sold, they designed this so it's meant to be like a commerce, like a product that they sell outside of themselves. So they're really good at, um, yeah, selling their products and outside. That's also one way for them to make an income. And um, yeah, and they're just beautiful. They stack. They also nest, and um, they have different. They're, they're made in this really beautiful way, where like. Um, you know, it's like formed, like steam bent wood, and these this like swallow tail, it's called swallow tail uh, joinery here is designed like perfectly designed to like move with the wood as it expands and contracts over the seasons, and um, and not crack. So, and they're also they're quite like airtight for you know for a wood box. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is like a later edition when. I think, I guess the timeline's like, it started in the late 1700s and they sort of died down around 1960. 
I think probably due to like industrialization in like the 30s, 20s and modernization. Yeah. And so, and also especially after World War II, I think there was a change in people's like mentality to thrive or to strive to create like, you know, to modernize and to create, you know, to live and start a family. And so a lot of these like shaker, um, I think shaker as a religion just ends up sort of gotten forgotten around that time. It was like at less, like in its heyday, people were joining the shakers because they were actually living very comfortably because they were joining their forces together. They had plenty of food, they had warm buildings, they had, you know, all the support that you need. Um, it was really hard to supply on your own if you were living in the countryside and... Or if you just got back from times. war and you're, you know, it's essentially like homeless or, or if you're... Or they they take even, anybody, right? Yeah, they'll accept anybody even though they oftentimes will, you know, it's like, or a widow, like their husband died in war and then they're by themselves and then to raise kids and then end up joining Shaker, but then they, yeah, they would accept A lot of African American Shakers were yeah. like former slaves that, you know, sought refuge there, so yeah. it was quite inclusive. Yeah. But this is an example, like in the 60s, they updated because it was sort of looking to sort of change it up, and <laughs> so they <laughs> went a little bit more Victorian. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and this is like from the workshop, this is a little like mantra that they sort of still, that sort of grounds them. So it's like, well, we're doing good, do all the good you can in all the ways you can, to all the people you can, in every place you can, at all the times you can, as long as you can. <laughs> so just do good <laughs> um, in the best way possible. And I just love how simple but profound and how it's, uh, every time I, you know, think about more, it's like, how can the design that we put output or the work that we do could have some better or, yeah, gooder <laughs> purpose? Um, yeah. Is there samples? Actually, like, some of the colors they used were kind of insane because they were yeah. known to be minimalist, but they had some really wild uses of color, even in their interiors. Some of them were, like, bright yellow. Um, so this is like a wacky orange. Orange, here. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, they have like yellow in the barn. And, yeah, it's like a special. And these are really just the. This boxes. is the workshop. Yeah. So there's like all the jigs and stuff. And you can go to the village and there's like funny, like retired um, volunteers that are still making the boxes the way the shakers did. And they'll teach you how to make them. And, mm -hmm. um, so the part of the experience is, is that, like, it's kind of interacting with these people that are just passionate about certain things like um a big part of their religion too was um was seen like um they were considered they were called the shakers because they were had this um music ritual to their their um their sermons that were like everybody danced and like got so into the dancing that they would kind of shake in ecstasy from like you know like they were possessed uh, to some degree um it's like the all day twerking they were like shaking, so then they people just call them shaking. <laughs> <laughs> like just twerking. Um, yeah. yeah. So like music was a part of that, and they at the village they they have like at two p.m. every day a guy comes up and um, takes you through a couple of the shaker songs, and you sing them, and you dance like that and stuff. So. The, the museum is like very, the experience is very immersive in that way. Yeah. I'm sorry we didn't memorize any of the songs. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you don't want to hear us sing. <laughs> um, but yeah. On Spotify? Huh? On Spotify? We did kind of look for it. Because uh, not... they're actually very, um, they have different songs. Like some of them are very kind of upbeat and participatory, and then some of them were about like sort of like calming yourself down and so they're very um yeah like very how would you describe it like like chant like almost like chants. chanting yeah so they don't use instruments so they do like a lot of stomping to kind of create rhythm and then just like acapella, acapella yeah stuff. And they, yeah um yeah. But, i mean they're still like 
one or this one place up in Maine that still where the remaining shakers are. So three it's left. like, or it's, oh, there's only three left, <laughs> and then one's like probably eight and a woman in her eighties, and then there's one guy who's in his like sixties that is the main sort of point of contact that is still there, and then and then apparently just recently like a twenty four year old just joined, which is. <laughs> We'll see how it goes, I guess. You know, they had people joining in the past, but then it, they didn't ever really last, maybe like a year or so. I can't, can't, can't handle it. Can't shake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's hard. It's like, yeah, becoming a monk. Or yeah. Um, but yeah, so we'll show you some of the examples of like, what, how the designers responded to the, the work that came out of the project. And that these are all shot in context of the Shaker Village to sort of have a, to create a juxtaposition between kind of this new reinterpretation, but it's still like respecting like and celebrating um, the Shaker values in, this, you know, in the history. Um, yes, yeah, so this is by Bertjan Pat from the Netherlands. And, so he was really, he's really big on weaving and textile. So he kind of looked at the weaving processes and then created this almost like a um, soccer, soccer scarf, you know, with like, you know, their logos and, you know, some commercializing <laughs> like shakers. So it's a pretty like humorous take on, on their really um, high quality um, textile. And then he also used, inspired by the woven shaker pattern, but created like a, a blanket, but with really pop. It's a rug, right? Oh, it's a rug, yeah, yeah. I guess so. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, kind of like poppy colors to it. Because yeah. I think also thinking about the, the color use in the front of the yeah. shakers. Yeah, and this is a one by Chris Spies, and I don't know if you <laughs> could see it, but essentially he designed a paper basket. So it's this one in the middle that just sort of blends into um, with the rest of the baskets and um, this idea. Well, like, I think I, he, he hand drew, or I didn't like hand draw, but like, like kind of line by line, he drew the pattern of the basket in, in Illustrator and on the computer and like made the form. And so he, he spent this inordinate inor amount of time, uh, like, Probably the amount of time you spend actually making a basket, making this model, and yeah. it was sort of about like uh, the same sort of dedication to the craft, but in a new technology, yeah. new technology. and sort of this idea of like temporary versus permanent, and like where do we put our value? You know, how do you value paper? I think that's his. Yeah. <laughs> and then he also did paper. These are hats. hats. Yeah. The Shakers all wore these like straw hats. Yeah. And this is like a mold, an actual right. hat mold mm -hmm. that the Shakers used to make the hats. Yeah. Um, and he also designed the, ch the table. Or no, what do you call it? Yeah, it's a candlestick table. Yeah. And, um, and I think he was sort of thinking about, again, this is used like, a CNC and this like complicated relationship with technology to make this piece, but also I think he he was considering sort of a lot of the shaker lines are very have a simple form, but they're very organic in some ways, and so I think he was sort of like almost cartoonizing those forms because some of them are very like cartoony kind of organic form. If you're, looking, yeah. if you're looking at like the finito on top of the chair, it's actually this. Yeah. It's very friendly. I guess there's yeah. a lot of it's like soft curve, but it's also very like logical and um, yeah. And he also designed this. So the same it's a, concept. Yeah, right? the same concept, like a dresser, but very friendly sort of forms. That... This is the yellow room in the shakers. They mm -hmm. they like peeled back the paint and they did a paint analysis of like what the room was painted like in the shakers prime, and it was this like ochre floor and this bright yellow. Uh, cabinetry and trim, and the whole room's just like a like it's sunshine. Very, yeah. So it's very. They were very. It wasn't like the drab sort of mm -hmm. um, sort of feeling that I think a lot of people associate with like shakers and their simplicity. Simplicity. Yeah, and I guess you could see like in this rug, it's actually the the scarf, like the pattern of like this um, 
this herringbone style. I don't yeah. know how to call it that. No, not for that. Um, but yeah, it's like inspired by Herb Jones. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. This sometimes this stuff like it blends in so well that I don't even know. <laughs> um, but these are actually um, like hammer that. Um, one of the Gabriel Tan. Gabriel Tan designed from Singapore um, was like using it as like a mallet for like breaking nuts actually, but was inspired by a specific um, hammer. It's very like generous, welcoming forms. Yeah. And then he designed like a wooden shelf. Oh, I yeah. couldn't find it. <laughs> yeah. Wooden floating shelf because um, they, with especially in Shaker Village, they often, with like getting ready, they, it's very modest. So the mirror is just like big enough for the face and then a few tools to get ready and, you know, shave or I don't know. Yeah, they don't have like a million like beauty products with them. Yeah, it's just exactly. like the yeah. bare essentials. Yeah. And then um, Studio Gorm designed this butter dish. So allowing that comes with like a integrated um, knife that sits next to the butt where the butter sits. And then a lot of the tools are very like purposeful, like they're kind of made for one purpose and use scenario. So they were exploring that. Yeah. So a swivel chair, yeah, it's like a lot of it's redundant. Um, yeah. Same like tools organized. These are like really satisfying like magnet attachments for the yeah. for the um, spatulas. Yeah. Bench that actually flat packs, so this like folds the the cover folds up, and then the 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 cross support actually like um, yeah, it all like flat packs really well um, by Helge. This one's by us, and it's an idea of like sort of celebrating time. Well, the shakers had like a different relationship with time. Like I think we we currently work in ways that where we try to minimize the amount of time we're spending working on things. But the Shakers had an opposite view of that where they, any time they were working, they were worshiping. So the more time you spend working, the closer you get to God. Um, and so they were very deliberate about their time and, um, and like considered the time they spent to be part of a high, higher calling. So our clock was this idea that in the, all the complexity of daily life that you could set aside a little bit of time to, uh, to do something that's really important that you really value or find fulfilling. Um, so this uh, clock face has like a, a frosted glass face and that circle denotes like an hour of passing. Or 30 minutes. Yeah. It could be an hour or it could be 15 minutes, but um, you could, and you can rotate this piece of glass in there so you can set this time that you're going to do something very intentional and valuable to you. And it's like this moment of clarity in a day that's otherwise sort of obscured by all these other commitments. And you could put the, <coughs> like some sort of relic or tool associated with doing that one practice um, in, this, in this niche here. And this form is inspired by um, a shaker clock that uh, yeah, is about the same that. size and mounts on the hook in the same way. Yeah. yeah, I mean a lot of the work that they do is very similar to also like Japanese craft, how they really devote their life to one thing and then you know almost achieving like enlightenment or just like spiritual sort of like place of you know meditative and so it's very there's like parallel um, sort of values between like Japanese and Shaker without really intention. There wasn't much overlap. I don't think they were. Like, they were exposed to. Yeah, but I think it's more just like continuity of values that end up sort of still permeating through their practice. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, and then tools. So we designed these tools, and the idea of like tools allowing precision and embrace creating like beautiful measure measuring objects. Um, and these are like protractors or angle finders that you could pivot on um, a swivel so you can find different angles. And then there's disc is like a circle maker. So you put a pen in different like pop, um, yeah, 
different dots here for like yes. mm -hmm. different image. They had a lot. They had a lot of tools, like layout tools, for all the work that they did. Um, and these are by us as well. So folding utensils, so using just one material <coughs> and one uh, process to create. It's like flat, and then and then we like put it in a mold to like press to form it. They were always very. They weren't as. They were concerned about preserving materials instead of time. So we wanted. Then they created things that were like making the optimal use. Like how can this chair leg use as little material and have as light of a footprint as possible? So we were trying to use like sheet material in a way that was just a very simple, um, like create structure out of as little material as possible. And this is by Studio Tolvenen from Finland, and they were looking at baskets and carrying, you know, containers. It was very playful, so that a lot of the colors that they use is from around all over Shaker Village. So like the pink from the barn, and uh, yeah, and the blue from the meeting room, and yeah. This is the flat room. Oh yeah, this is the flat room. So and the tiny room. mirror. Yeah. So <laughs> any flat room you see is actually from the Shakers. <laughs> And they made the broom so well that you could um, put it on the ground and like let go of it and it will stay standing. Wow. And uh, this like is a test of good craftsmanship. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a redesign of a, the shaker also knit. So then they um, use like a mitten mold. So then the idea is that the thump actually comes off. So you knit around it and then you could take off this part and then the thumb comes out so you, yeah mm. which is pretty clever yeah. and so it's just kind of a redesign of a clever form as yeah. like a sculpture piece um, yeah but yeah and then uh, Tom is from Oregon he's like a also tinker and crafts and um, and he designed this broom kind of inspired by a kind of different uh, language from different versions um, the side table by Darren from Seattle. Um, yeah, and just a simple sort of uh, base with the top, just very, very yeah. clear. <laughs> like it yeah, it goes like, over the bed. Like they actually had a table like this. It was kind of like a formal interpretation. Yeah, like you could push it close, like the mm. leg would go under the table. Yeah. yeah. Um, these are the rug beaters. So um, redesigning rug beaters, so it becomes this like playful um, form and designed by uh, Vera and Kites from Norway. And it's a reinterpretation of like a laundry hanger. Drying rack, yeah. Yeah, drying rack. They were big on laundry. They had a whole facility for laundry. So this is taken in, in the laundry room. Um, and all the floors of the laundry room, since it was wet all the time, were all like slabs of marble. Really beautiful, really beautiful room. Yeah. So, I mean, I think like as a whole, I think probably like a couple years of workshop and then probably have like about like 80 products or something. Like every year it's like about 40 products. And so it's like almost, it could be quite, it's like kind of endless in terms of how we could how much people could explore. Um, yeah. And then I guess from here we could yeah, how much time do you want to, Yeah, how much more time do you have? Yeah. Whatever you need. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, well we could I think take you some of this yeah, like wanted to help like kind of share like moments of discovery from actually being there aside from the products themselves. So um, Jean's gonna Oh, sorry, I'm trying to find that. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so like you can see. Oh, yeah. So uh, the photo sort of virtual tour that we're going to take you, it's like we essentially created, you know, like documented all going around to all these different buildings. There's like a machine shop, there's a living dwelling, there's a meeting space where they did a lot of the ritual, um, spiritual kind of, yeah. Um, singings and dancing and even the barn and um, the where they make the boxes and so there's like a lot of buildings and I 
you know, don't know, don't want to like go through all of it, but then I'm just going to like <laughs> click around and tell. So you guys just say stop. Whoever say stop, I'm going to stop and then open that folder. Just open that folder. And then we'll do the same thing with the images. And we'll just pull up an image them. and yeah, so talk I'm about it. Go around until somebody. <laughs> okay. Miscellaneous is unclassifiable. <laughs> Great. <laughs> it's like, I feel like I should have a wheel or something. What? <laughs> <laughs> So this is the shared folder by the, from the whole Furnishing Utopia team. So Jonah Takagi put that in there as a prank. <laughs> this is Jonah. Thanks, Jonah. Anyway, I was gonna go down until somebody else. Right. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. This huh? is just uh, part of a barn detail this from the, the pink, barn. pink barn and the horse barn. Yeah. And uh, all the barns were like raised by hand, like all the journeyers by hand. And actually the, um, there's a blacksmith, uh, shop in the village. And there's like an old, like retired guy who like holds down the blacksmith for it. And he shows people how to make nails. Mm -hmm. And it, <laughs> it takes like eight minutes, 10 it's minutes, ten minutes to make a time. nail. Yeah. It's like a, like a eight step process. He's like hammering away at it. And so he's like, yeah, the nails were like, much more precious back then so a lot of the barns were made with um Just you know joinery. like with joinery yeah. and the you know maybe like a couple nails here and there but yeah it yeah it makes for a very different sort of like um experience oh, of the like construction of especially barns yeah okay next <laughs> oh. Uh, okay oh okay so this is a basket <laughs> I think it's almost like a picnic basket that has like an open, um, like, yeah, it's like a, has like a cover that you could sort of open. But I think we were looking at more just the kind of like complexity. Beautiful details of the, yeah. of the patterns, I think. And how like, they are able to. it's wrapped all the way up. Oh, yeah. It's like too mm -hmm. But it's like quite foxy, which is pretty hard to achieve. Like most of the baskets is naturally round for the ease, you know, you, you're mm. working with the wicker to kind of go in circular form. So, but they have all sorts of form. Of course, they have round ones, but they'll have the more rectangular ones, which we thought was like pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so, uh, wait, which one? Just, uh, just stop there. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah, this is um, details everywhere. I know. Sometimes we haven't seen like a lot of stuff we actually haven't looked at in a while. Um, so there was like a, a drain, you know, where the rain comes down, and they they design this. It's using like the marble, right? Yeah, it's like a slab it's of marble again. Thick. Yeah. I think they had like mm -hmm. surplus marble. I think it, like the ground there is it's kind of like rough granite kind of. Um, Kind of terrain so yeah but it's but such like a beautiful sort of almost poetic way of receiving water um that that's sort of stood out yeah i think somebody really liked that yeah. form and then drains you know very gradually too so it works yeah. should we go to a different uh, room or a different yeah, yeah. Or you should stop us. Stop. Uh, you know. <laughs> Break Dolly? Oh, it's a good one. Oh, and stop us if we're taking too long with yeah, this. Exactly. We could kind of like do it all night. Okay. But. Yeah, let's yeah. do that one and we can. Okay. 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 I'm going to tell me when to stop. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, this cool. is a workstation. Like this it's like probably about just like this. It's always like very petite, like the way they um, design sort of like these working desks and. Um, yeah, and we really like how, and they're very careful about like storage and very intentional in what they put in. So, um, and oftentimes like they design um, built-in sort of drawers, so have different increments. So you could tell like the top one of the drawer is slightly smaller than the big one. So oh, yeah, they're graduated like, drawers. Yeah, like there's actually if I could find it, there's. Um, the whole wall of dress, dresser or drawers that go from like small and it goes bigger. So then like that visual cue of difference in drawers, then could, I you know, then you could tell like, you could remember like, okay, it's here versus, or it's for this kind of stuff or small stuff is for tchotchkes or big stuff is for shoes, right? 
oh, one more point about this too. This is like, the design of this is modular. So they were kind of always moving furniture around. Um, but these types of pieces were designed to be modular. So the, you know, this is like a very basic base unit that could be in any, any sort of scenario for having a workspace. But they would they added this top module onto you see it in all all different pieces where they've added like a top module that made it specialized for a function, which I think is really interesting. Like this is just a normal table, but you add this and now you can use it for writing letters or I, I'm not sure what the particular use was, but um, pretty yeah. pretty smart, right pretty versatile. Like next. This one? Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So okay. this looks really nice. <laughs> so you can see this built in drawer. So it actually goes from like maybe it changes like an inch. But there's definitely a difference between the top one, second one, third, 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 third. Yeah. And this is where uh, I guess meetings. This is a meeting room, right? Yeah, no, it wasn't the meeting house, but they would use this to, to have meetings in, in, the, this, in the brick dwelling. So mm -hmm. everyone would come down and, and Meet about something, um. <laughs> and then you can see where the how the rails, the the shaker rails use. So that's like a step stool, and then they always hang the chair upside down, so the dust will just fall down, and then they the just, crumbs that were yeah, on there. crumbs or that whatever. Um, this is like a, a step stool, so it actually has like a handle. a piece that comes up that's like a handle of the step stool, so you can take it down and like move it around to reach reach those high drawers. Stop her. Stop. Who's, who's gonna stop us now? Huh? Stop. <laughs> stop. Stop. Oh, which one? This one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, oh. Iron. Uh, made with a mix of stone. Sorry? Yeah, I think these are, these this are is stone, stone and then cast iron. Yeah. So I think so it's um, kind of using not only um, just being resourceful with materials, so the stone adds weight, but then so the, the whole thing doesn't have to be made with steel. Um, yeah, it's probably a, a like saving materials. Yeah, and, and also it doesn't transfer heat through the handle. Uh, so yeah. So, yeah. So this becomes like an insulate insulates you from the heat of the. Yeah. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah. This is a chandelier <laughs> made with tin. Um, so they almost look like they're little tart baking things. Yeah, <laughs> it's actually like kind of unrefined. Yeah, which is kind of crude and was, yeah, yeah. which is kind of I charming. I think they would they store were. the candles in yeah. here or something. Mm -hmm. Oh, they would. A chamber. Yeah, so they just like hang out. Yeah. And sometimes they'll like, you'll see as you go through like, when you go to the museum, sometimes it's just very like hacked together, very crude, like mm -hmm. that, and sometimes like really beautiful. But I like kind of the random stuff. Yeah. There's one extra cool thing here. This is like the meeting room. Um, we're looking up at the ceiling, obviously, but um, this whole thing is a, a gigantic wall that can be pulled down. It's like a pocket wall. So it comes like down from the ceiling and you can divide the space into a smaller space. I always haven't seen this enough. Uh, let's see, we'll go to a different. Yeah. Anybody? Stop. Uh, video? video? I don't know if we have any. Oh. Oh, no, no, I don't. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> we were planning on doing it. Another one? Stop. Oh, okay. Charlie's photos are good for what? For what? Mm -hmm. oh, it's like more the. Okay, so these are all the inspirations that were specific that the designers were drawn from. So yeah, yeah that could like uh, I'm trying to see. For example, I guess we were looking at these tools. They're really beautiful. Those are some of the tools we were referencing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Really delicate. Um, and then for example, uh, yeah, these baskets. I was inspired by them, the paper baskets. Paper baskets. Um, Um, I think, yeah, these 
Yeah, this is that mallet that. Mm, that's uh, very similar to the mallet. Yeah. 